Mark McDermott was a successful businessman, an Australian who found love in a new home in rural West Virginia. Mark married Johanna, who had a young son, Donald. According to Mark's sister, Tracy, whom we reached via Skype in Australia, he treated Donald like he was his own. The connection between them, it was amazing, like any father-son connection, stronger, actually. According to Donald's close friend, Alex Wills, when Mark and Johanna separated for a short time, Donald insisted on living with his stepfather, not his mother. Mark was a great guy. He was always very friendly. Um, their relationship seemed very easygoing. Mark was always very nice. Um, he was always handing him money, always buying him nice stuff. So I, I would say it was a great relationship. Mark even paid for Donald's education at Marshall University, where his stepson lived with his fiancée. Donald uh, led a very comfy lifestyle. He never wanted for much. Um, he went on trips uh, to other countries with his stepdad. His stepdad always gave him what he needed or what he wanted, including a nice car, nice clothes, a roof over his head, um, just a very comfortable lifestyle. Was Johanna somehow jealous of this relationship? When she was suddenly stricken with cancer, she waged the battle with Mark's love and support. So why would she snuff him out with such malice? On the day Mark was killed, the family was preparing for a celebration. Donald was graduating from college. According to police reports, Mark was in the living room reading on the couch. Donald was downstairs getting ready for his big day. He was taking a shower, getting ready for graduation, and while he was in the bath, apparently his mother had shot his father. He came out, saw what had happened, and was aghast that something had happened to his father. The 911 call supports that claim. I've got other people getting help on the way. Do you want to stay on the phone with me? No. Yes. You do? Okay. How old is he? My husband, he's 54. 54? And you were just fighting? Yes. Okay. And you shot him in the side? No, in the head. In the head? Okay. Just try to stay calm for me, okay? My son's in the bathtub, and I'm going to try to get downstairs. Okay. How old is your son? Uh, 23. Okay. Does he know what's happened? Sergeant Greg Cade was one of the first to arrive on the scene. Um, when we first got into the residence, we observed a female. She appeared to be in a state of shock. And then we come upon the living room, and we observed a white male, a middle-aged, slumped over on the couch with an apparent gunshot wound to the head. Two gunshots, actually both through the skull. It appears Mark was reading a book when he was killed, caught completely off guard. Police find the murder weapon on the dining room table. They also discover this suicide note, apparently written by Johanna to Donald, where she states she couldn't stay trapped in a loveless marriage any longer, and apologizes that she won't be there to see the man you become. Officers take Johanna into custody, and Donald is brought back to the Raleigh County Sheriff's Office to give a statement. And that's when things would take a wild turn. Mark McDermott, a 54-year-old stepfather gunned down by her own admission at the hands of his wife, Johanna. Okay, and you shot him in the side? No, in the head. In the head? <laughs> by all accounts, Mark was a loving husband to Johanna and generous father to her son, Donald. But he was always handed a lot of stuff through Mark. Um, a nice car, nice clothing, uh, trips around the world. He was pretty much given anything that he wanted. Captain James Bear is called in to question Johanna and Donald. Both are placed in separate interrogation rooms. He initially told me he conveyed the same story to me that he had to everyone else. Basically that he was taking a shower and his mother shot his father. But when he speaks with Johanna, she drops a bombshell. At some point, she switched from I shot him to Donald had shot him. Captain Bear also notices something odd about Donald. He was just plain as could be. He didn't, he never was emotional. He was never upset. He never was angry. He, he was just pretty much flat the entire time. Bear hammers Donald with Johanna's story. But he was surprisingly easy to break. 
as far as the confession goes because I confronted him with what I knew and what my suspicions were and he pretty much just broke at that. Donald confesses to killing his stepfather, but the how and why will blow your mind. It turns out Donald had flunked out of college years earlier, although he continued to produce phony report cards and tell everyone, including his fiance, that he was still a student. He had been living a lie for about two years, pretending to be a college student. So on the day of his graduation, Donald knew he was about to be exposed. He said that he'd been planning this at least since spring break, that he knew that eventually that he was going to have to graduate. So he had known for a couple months that he was going to have to do this. He was going to the gun range and he was uh, you know, target practicing with multiple friends, um, trying to learn more about guns, which he was never really into in high school. So he had taken that gun from his mother's drawer. It was his mother's gun and had it with him during the time he was home preparing for graduation. It's just senseless to kill someone to cover up for a lie. Um, to me, it's just incredibly selfish. But it gets even crazier. It was supposed to be a murder-suicide. But it wasn't a typical murder-suicide. Far from it. When Johanna came home from running an errand that day, Donald had already shot Mark twice in the head. But his plan was only half complete. When she came in, he said, Mom, I have something for you. Um, she thought it was a present or something. And, uh, for him graduating. So he sat her down on the bench, and that's where he said, I want you to close your eyes. I've got something for you. And that's when he took the gun, pressed it up against her head, and pulled the trigger. She heard a click. She opened her eyes, realized there was a gun. The gun actually failed to function because on a semi-automatic, if you push the slide enough out of battery, it won't function properly, which is what saved her life. Shocked, his mother manages to knock the gun away. According to what Johanna told police, he said, just hold still and it will be over with. In Johanna's suicide note, Donald had typed it out to justify a murder-suicide by his mother against Mark. His reasoning behind all this was that he thought it'd be easier for him to just kill his parents as opposed to telling them the truth because he didn't want to disappoint them. Acting quickly, Johanna convinced Donald that she could take the rap for the murder, stating, quote, I said, how about if I say I shot him? He finally agreed, which led to this 911 call. Listening now, you can hear the terror in Johanna's voice. And you guys were just fighting? Yes. Just supposed to be nice today. It's Did your son's graduation? Okay. Is your son okay? Yes. During her interrogation, Johanna said, quote, one of us needs to be locked up because he will try to kill me again. I was in complete shock. Um, because, you know, being that close to him throughout the years, uh, I just, I never saw it coming. And there was this moment when the dispatcher asked to speak to Donald. Okay, can I talk to your son? Can I talk to your lady? Uh, what? Sir, this is a 911 dispatcher. Okay. Okay, can you check and see if, I mean, I asked her if she wanted to do CPR. I can help her with it if, if somebody needs help. He's, he's not breathing. Okay, do you want to attempt to do CPR? I don't know, he's not, he's not breathing and he's, I don't know. I mean, he just had no emotion, no care. It just, it was all about him and only him, and he could care less about anything else. He even had a game plan for how he was going to react and his plan for the future after, if he was able to pull this off. His game plan was he was going to ride the swell of emotion that he got and the sympathy that he got from people um, to try to get him through financially or whatever he could get um, for quite some time. Then he planned on getting fit, as he put it, and he said he had planned on going into law enforcement, actually. In fact, during his confession, Donald told police that after he shot Mark, he, quote, expected to be physically ill, or, you know, at least worried. It's not there. Mark McDermott's family in Australia is understandably devastated. Still to this day, I'll never make sense of it because it's just a heartless monster that was born into my brother. I think he's in the right place. And he's going to be there for the rest of his life. Not going to bring Mark back, but... 
McDonald has never expressed remorse for his actions and even told Captain Bear he would do it all again. I asked him, why didn't, why didn't you just come clean with your parents and tell them the truth about it? He just completely said that he thought it would be easier just to kill them as opposed to telling them the truth. Donald Dunn was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. Surprising to many, his mother Johanna, who declined our interview, continues to maintain a relationship with her son, even though he was one click away from taking her life. Dunn appealed his conviction and sentence all the way up to the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals. However, the high court upheld the decision. He'll now spend the rest of his life behind bars.